The latest headlines in the Ivy League, covered through exclusive interviews right now. From campus to campus, go around the ancient eight with Brian Seltzer, Thursdays on the Ivy League Digital Network. Football. Getting going this week in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Scott Sudikoff from Harvard and the Ivy League Digital Network. He is the football play-by-play broadcaster. Big showdown in football this week between the Ivy League co-champions, the Harvard Crimson on the road, versus the Princeton Tigers. What's the mindset, Scott, of the Crimson going into this game? They have this nine-game winning streak. It began after they lost in triple overtime to Princeton last year. Well, I think the mindset, especially this season, is that they haven't yet played their best football. Some injuries up and down the offense, defense have attributed to that. Uh, but I don't think they've put together a full, a full game yet. And then I think the mindset is that they are relying on their defense this year. And it's going to be interesting to see against Princeton, of course, because both teams have top offenses in the league or right there at the top and both have top defenses in the league so I know I think they're going to go down to Princeton they know what happened last year it was a heck of a game a thrilling game and they know that's their last loss so we have to think there's a lot of revenge on their mind but of course from Princeton's side they know that they can beat Harvard because they just did it last year. You mentioned the injuries Scott no Connor Hempel since week one Saitu Smith Ricky Zorn Tyler Hamlin they were all out last weekend versus Lafayette so with the health of the Crimson right now, where do you see things being going into this game, and what character have they built up in these last recent weeks without some of those players? It's definitely, they've been resilient the last couple of games, and other guys have stepped in. You know, you have that, that mantra of the next man up. Well, Andrew Fisher has done that in the wide receiver spot and on kick return. Scott Hush has done a pretty solid job. So I think with the injuries, at the very least, it's allowed players behind on the depth chart to get this extra time and if Harvard can start to work in some of the players returning hopefully at some point uh, they'll be in a very good situation but of course you go play Princeton a team that you know everything's going pretty well for them right now so it's going to be tough to combat that. The reigning Ivy League co-champions matched up on Saturday and potentially the two reigning Ivy League players of the year in Quinn Epperly and Zach Hodges. Scott Sudikoff with the scoop from Cambridge, Massachusetts on Harvard football. Appreciate it Scott, thanks. All right, thank you. Soccer. To University City, Penn Men's Soccer, Dan Fritz from the Penn Sports Network is the play-by-play announcer. The defending champs are Penn, Dan. They've made a move into second place with a big win over Dartmouth this past Saturday. Quakers and Big Green now tied in the standings with six points apiece. Kind of an up-and-down year for the Quakers with some new, younger pieces. What allowed them to turn things around in Hanover, especially coming off of back-to-back losses? Well, there's an old phrase in Penn Athletics from the late Dan Ferry from Game Day Football Operations, and that setbacks make the way for comebacks. The fact that the guys have been able to not let the setbacks really get to them and to bounce back in the next games, especially after the loss to Rutgers, they had an opportunity for history to repeat itself up at Hanover, but they composed themselves. The rookies took over for the game. Austin Kuhn netted his second goal of the year. Sam Wankowitz as well also got a goal to give them the 2-1 to lead. And that's really been the key, the fact that the depth of the team, both upperclassmen and lowerclassmen, have been a good balance and have really kept the Quakers in these games. So, Dan, the Quakers trying to get some momentum going down the stretch of the conference schedule. When will we know if this team has what it takes to possibly make a run at two straight? I think a lot of it's going to depend on what happens this weekend up at New Haven. If uh, the Quakes can come away from Yale with a win, gives them more momentum, gives them more confidence. Brown comes in the following weekend, and then they round out the Ivy table, Princeton. And if all goes well, Saturday, November 15th here at Rhodes Field, could be a repeat from last year and have everything for all the marbles. Should be a fun team to watch down the stretch of the men's soccer season. Dan Fritz calling all the action on the Penn Sports Network. Dan, thank you. All right, thanks, Brian. Field hockey. Finishing up in Morningside Heights, Mike Kowalski covers Columbia field hockey. Mike, before getting into the specifics about this season in general, what has this year been like? The Lions 10-4, and 3-1 and in Ivy League play, two wins away from matching a program record for victories in a season. The season's been great, obviously. Uh, the team's been very resilient uh, during this four-game winning streak. Uh, they've had to come from behind in all four games. 
and it's a testament to their character and the hard work they put in. Well, in particular, Mike, these last two games was that clutch overtime conference win on the road at Penn this past Saturday, then a back-to-back on Sunday getting past Delaware with those two goals in the last five minutes. Junior midfielder Christina Freibot seems to be in the middle of it all. What has she brought to the program? The ball always seems to find her stick in key moments. And, you know, the goal against Penn on Saturday, that that was one of the most clutch goals I've seen. Uh, It was a diving effort. It just kind of sums up the season. The team was desperate with an attempt like that to tie the game and force overtime and then to assist on the game winner, you know, just 19 seconds in. It's just a credit to her. Frybot, the Ivy League Player of the Week, and also a face in the crowd with Sports Illustrated. Mike Kowalski with the scoop on Columbia Field Hockey. Mike, much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. And that's all for this week on Around the Ancient Eight. Speak to you next Thursday right here on the Ivy League Digital Network. This has been Around the Ancient Eight, highlighting headlines from the Ivy League. Check out new episodes premiering Thursdays on the Ivy League Digital Network.